did that, Alex. <laughs> I've never really read a sports book before, but it is really funny. Oh, thank um, so you. it's about kind of how to be a footballer. It's your experience of being surrounded by world class footballers, isn't it? Who've got lots of money and not often make the right choices, really. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I throw myself into that as well. I made a lot of wrong choices. Oh, yes, uh, we know. Time, we read. As I've, <laughs> as I've, yeah, uh, yeah. As From I'm haircuts sure seen, to yeah. clothes. Haircuts, tattoos, yeah. the lot. Um, what was but, the most um, expensive haircut? That, um, that you well, yeah, I got charged. I mean, I was, I was used to growing up, I paid a tenner, you know, yeah. director's cut, my, my local uh, yeah. hairdresser, short back and sides. Um, and then uh, with Abby having her hair done and things like that, I was yeah. like, oh, do you mind cutting my hair? And he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, 250 quid. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was doing me a favour, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, went, I literally went from a tenner to paying 250 quid, and it was it blew my mind. And uh, it's, it's things like that where I think because you're a footballer, I think sometimes they it's do. like you take advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Or... Yeah. yeah. Well, it's more of a guide than certainly than an autobiography. But we've oh. done we've done a bit of a checklist of the do's and don'ts. So Peter, you can talk us through as we go. Let's put up the first one. Here's the first one. Um, so this is a do. Do plan your goal celebration. So this is alluding, obviously, to the to the role part. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that wasn't too much. That wasn't too planned, to be honest. I mean, that um, it's, it was 12 years ago, believe it or not. I did it 2006. Uh, I've only done it three times on a football pitch, but um, yeah, it was. I think it started and David Beckham had a party at his house, and um, I did the robot, but it was being televised, and uh, I was just having a laugh on the dance floor. Someone caught it on camera, and uh, they left it in the show. So uh, all the lads <laughs> watched it, said, oh, it's brilliant. If you score in that ma next match, yeah, you've got to do it. Do it again, I was yeah. like, uh, yeah, I'm off on the bench, fine. I'll, yeah, no problems, I'll do it. And uh, I came on and scored, and uh, that was the rest of history. 12 years <laughs> later, I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the next one is something we were talking about on the show last night. Let's have a look. Now, this is very controversial. Yeah. Do have a group bath after a match. Now, Matt and I were very much against hot tubs, but I suppose with footballers, I might be in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on. What, what's, what's Well, no, it's been, it's been eradicated. I think um, back in the day, obviously, when I first started, it was a uh, procedure all around uh, most grounds. I had a big bath, everyone jumped in it, and it was... Uh, we well, had a great normal. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it seemed it was normal. How many people are we talking? Uh, we're talking about 10, 12 people in a bath. Yeah, I mean, if you, uh, there's old pictures of, you know, 1966, the World Cup, and yeah. uh, you know all the players lifting the trophy in the bath. I think that's that's all gone. I think someone's come in and realised it wasn't too hygienic. Found that out last night. Now you to be honest. Yeah. Decided to move it on, but um, yeah. Okay, okay. on to the next one. Let's have one more, if we can. Uh, and we're going to go for a don't. Don't be surprised by strange superstitions. Now, the book is full of these. Mm. Um, fantastic. Let's go with your Spurs teammate who turned up with an interesting <laughs> lunch in a bag. Right, yeah. Um, God, I, I've got millions over the years. I've had to sort of curb it, but uh, Benoit Asu Okoto hated football. He was just very good at it. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> he, he didn't know who he'd be playing on a Saturday. He didn't know... Um, he wasn't interested, really, in, in football, but, he, as I say, he was very good at it. He used to come in, obviously, we'd be having our pasta, our chicken, um, just to tuck it into fueling, really, for the game, eating yeah. protein and uh, banana, what, what have you, and he'd just come in with a little Tesco bag, and he'd have the same sort of four items every, uh, every, every week. Yeah. Uh, he'd have a, um, a hot chocolate, he'd have a packet of crisps, a Coke, wow. uh, and a croissant. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he had to have the same thing. Yeah, he would have them every time, yeah. And, uh, it's no, like nothing I've ever seen before, but <laughs> yeah. he could run all day and he was, he was good, like I say, so fair play to him. Wow. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it is, it is funny, Peter. I mean, having not read a sports book, I really very much enjoyed it. And that's six foot seven. Peter towers over the opposition defence, obviously, but you don't have to be quite as tall to become a legend in your sport. Well, here is the story of a five foot three Italian.